new version of IP adapter was just released. And this release completely breaks previous workflows because it's a complete node rewrite. On the one hand, good, we got new toys to work with. On the other, that's kind of bad because I just released a video that relied heavily on IP adapter. If you haven't seen that video yet, it's about generating infinite reference images starting from just one or two images using IP adapter. Now let's head back to the drawing board and actually see what this new IP adapter can do. If we go over to the GitHub page for IP adapter, we can see that there's an announcement, IP adapter v2, complete code rewrite warning where Matteo, the developer, says that the code has been completely rewritten. So any previous workflows would not work. Also, he is releasing this completely undocumented. He says that new documentation and video tutorials will come out in the coming days, but for now, we will have to make do with our own workflows and see what's changed and what's the same. So let's load up the workflow from my previous video and see what happens when IP adapter has been updated. As you can see, we got two errors here, these two were IP adapters, and we got an error code here. When loading the graph, the following node types were not found, IP adapter apply. And that's because the apply IP adapter node is not there anymore. In its place, there's two new nodes, IP adapter and IP adapter advanced. In order to demonstrate those, let's load this workflow up. You can find this workflow in the description below. It is basically a simpler version of the workflow from my previous video, where we generate new reference images starting from only one reference image. Here you can see that I loaded up the two new IP adapter nodes, the IP adapter advanced on the left and the IP adapter regular on the right. The main difference between the two that we can see is that in both of them we got the model, the IP adapter, the image and the attention mask. But in the regular version, the simpler version on the right, we don't have clip vision, we don't have image negative, and we have way less options. For now, we wanna concentrate on the advanced version only. So let's remove the simpler IP adapter node and focus on the IP adapter advanced node. We can see that the main structure is basically the same as before. We got the model, which is loaded from the checkpoint, goes through the IP adapter and then goes back into the case sampler. We got the IP adapter input, which derives from the IP adapter model loader. We got the image input, which comes from the load image. The clip vision on the bottom, usually it was under IP adapter, now it's all the way to the bottom. And we got image positive and image negative. The image field is basically the same as the previous one, while the image negative appears to be a negative prompt of sorts, but by using an image. Attention mask is the same as before. And then we got weights, weight type, combine embeds, start at and end at. Let's start with the things that have remained the same. Weight is the same as before. And if you watched the previous video, you already know that the weight influences how much the generated image looks like the loaded image. Start at and end at influence the point at which the generated image is being influenced by the IP adapter start at is the start and end at is the end point. Weight types are different now. We got a whole lot of new weight types. We've got linear, is in, is out, is in and out, reverse in and out, weak input, weak output, weak middle, strong middle. Let's start with linear. Linear seems to me to be doing the same thing that original was doing before. It's linearly applying the loaded image into the generated image. The weight type ease in looks like it's easing in the weight in the first iterations and then going up to the definitive weight in the later iterations. Ease out, on the other hand, appears to be doing the opposite, while ease in and out appears to be a combination of the two. And I have to say, this is quite interesting because I was used to be working with start at and end at in order to tinker these kind of values, but ease in and out kind of do the same thing, but better. So that's pretty nice. And for the last four wait times, I'm not sure what they're doing. At least the names are not self-explanatory and the results are a bit all over the place. So it's kind of hard for me to infer what they're doing. So I'd rather wait for proper documentation if you want to take a look at the results though, weak input as a weight type looks like it's doing something along the lines of linear 
although with a little less artifacts and a little less noise, this is the weak input result and this is the linear result. Whereas if we look at the weak output weight type, we can see that it, the image is a lot more contrasty and defined in a way. The artifacts are basically non-existent, so it's kind of interesting, but I'm not sure what kind of operation it's doing. It's also the furthest from the actual reference image that we're using, so it is kind of hard for me to grasp exactly what it's doing here, but it's definitely interesting. Weak middle appears to be very, very, very close to the linear weight input type. This is the linear, this is the weak middle one. They are very, very close. And I tried strong middle, the last option for weights, both with SDXL and SD1.5, because I thought there might have been an issue with SDXL. This is the result with SDXL that prevented it from working with SDXL, because the reference image is completely different from the resulting image. But I tried it with SD1.5 as well, and the resulting image is just completely different from the reference image. So I'm not entirely sure what strong middle is doing. I think it's sidestepping a bit on the reference image, like trying to keep the mood, but being influenced a, a lot more by the actual prompt. But the result is really, really different from what I would expect IP adapters to do normally. So all in all, if I were to work in a production environment, I would be quite sure of what these first five wait times do, and I wouldn't really touch the last four, at least until a proper documentation is out by Matteo. On the other hand, if you just want to experiment, you can absolutely use those as well without proper documentation. So all of this was with using IP adapter with just one image. But we got the combine embeds field now as well, so that means we can use more than one image in the same IP adapter node now. In order to do so, we can just duplicate the load image node and then search for batch images. We load up a second image here and then link up the images into the batch images node and then the resulting image into the IP adapter advanced node. Here we can see that we have five different ways to combine those images. We have concat, add, subtract, average and norm average. So in order to see all the differences between the embed types, I've built this monstrosity of a workflow. From the top we've got concat, then we got add, then we got subtract, then we got average and then we got norm average. Concat appears to be a concatenation of both of the reference images in a new reference image that retains the aspects of both. And it's a very good result, honestly. I can see Concat being the foundation upon which I will build all my next reference image workflows. Add, on the other hand, seems to be adding the elements of one image on top of the other. It appears to be adding elements of both images one on top of the other in a more forceful way. On the other hand, subtract seems to be subtracting all of the elements that pertain the second image from the first image. In our case, the second image was more dark and gloomy and the first image was more ethereal and floral and the resulting image appears to be like a supercharged first picture. Average appears to be really really close to add, but in a less forceful way, which is nice. And I'm not sure about what's happening with norm average. The resulting image seems to be not as refined as all the other options. And if we go take a look at the workflow example from the GitHub as well, we can see that norm average is nowhere to be found in their example as well. So I would think that norm average is not as refined as all the other modes. So in terms of production ready modes, I would think that concat, subtract, and average are kind of production ready, while add and norm average are not as refined as the other three modes. All in all then, IP adapter is getting more and more powerful and I welcome this change. If I could make a request to Matteo though, would be to release the old IP adapter version as well on GitHub, so that users can choose between the two versions. I'm sure that there's users out there who rely on IP adapter 
and having their workflow become non-functional overnight is a bit rough. Yes, they can just update and then select like weight type linear and combine embeds concat, but in order for them to understand what they need to do, at least without proper documentation out yet, they would need to test new things extensively. As this is a rather big update, I would have preferred to have a completely different node, a new node, a release to the public, and have both of them released at the same time. Now I will try to update my latest video as soon as possible to reflect these changes. I'm Andrea Bayoni, you can find me on Instagram at Rizunobushi or on the web at andreabayoni.com. Remember to like and subscribe as this is a new channel and that helps a lot and I'll be seeing you next time.